the things you go through. Now, for instance, as myself, as as a child, as I was going through this here bout, being molested at five to seven years old, the sad part about it was is that my brother went to a grave not knowing this. Now, the topic, my message, I got a message for you, but I'm leading it in to my message with my testimony because I want you gentlemen to know whether it's be the pastors, the reverend, and you got to understand there's our pastors out there right now going through the stuff that I had to go through, but they got too much pride to come on air and let folks know that there is a way out of this situation. And if you get out of the situation, then you can learn, then you can proceed to help others in the situation that they're in. Because, see, in these days and times, ladies and gentlemen, we got to be able to share. You got to get that pride out the way. And I've been thinking about this. Do I really want to go and share this? Now, they did an article on me called Drugs Uncut, which is key awareness. And I don't know if you uh, got a chance to see that, but it's in the newspaper. Um, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to tell you a little more about that later on because I do not have a lot of time. So I got to be mindful of the time. But I do want to tell you a little more about the things that I had to go through in my life. You know, the sad part about it is when you got to hide stuff from people, especially your mother and your father. And my father was just as worse. My father was the one that usually kicked my butt. But see, he was the same guy that says I wouldn't mount out to nothing. That I wouldn't be nothing. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't do, I'd be dirt on the street. But now the same folks that told me I wouldn't mount out to nothing, now I'm getting the phone call. And it ain't about getting even with anybody, folks. It, don't, don't look at this broadcast and take it that way. Because I want you to get something out of what I'm trying to tell you when I start to bring this word. Because as I want this to be known all over the world, my New Year's resolution for 2000, they say 2014, 2015, what are you going to give up? God, dog, we ain't got to give up nothing. All you got to do is follow the word of God. That's all you got to do. And if you can follow the word of God, and God will sustain you, he will hold you. And it's just like, if I was going to use for a topic today, you know that song that says, it's like a jungle sometimes. And it makes me wonder, how the world do I keep from going under? It's like a jungle sometimes. Everything that I went through in my life, it was like a doggone jungle. And it said, it's, and if you go to Genesis 18, verse 14, and it reads, There isn't anything too hard for my Lord at the appointed time. He will return unto to thee according to to the times of, of life, and Sarah shall have a baby. Now, they said Sarah couldn't have no baby. And if you read in the scripture, uh, 14, 15, and 16, I just want to touch on that one particular verse, because uh, when you say there's nothing too hard for your God, it is true. There's nothing too hard, because look what, how he delivered me. He delivered me from being molested as a child to go to college, to, uh, uh, to be able to bring the word, to be able to help others. Now I am in a helping mode. There is nothing too hard for God. You know, when your life feels like it's in a jungle situation, and when you are in a jungle, and you walk into this jungle called life, your life is just like a jungle sometimes. And you wonder, how the world do you keep from going under? How do you keep from going under? It's simple. you got to keep praying about the Lord. God, pull me out of this jungle. Will I ever get out of this jungle of dirt? Yes, I will. God has blessed me with two, not one, but two twins. Not me. No, no, no. Don't you get that twisted out there. I'm talking about my daughter. And they are the reason why I'm here for the season. Because... Being in the jungle, they took me, God gave me my grandkids 
to sustain me, to hold me, to bring this word of God. And last time I was here, if you remember, I was talking about homeless folks. I was talking about homeless folks. Their life is like a jungle sometimes. And you wonder, how do they keep from, keep from going under? How do they keep from going under? Once again, like I just told you. They have to have the Lord on their side. Now the Lord is on my side as we speak. Because right now, to be honest with you, I probably shouldn't even be here right about now. But I couldn't wait to get into this studio. So I have so much stuff inside of me in the name of Jesus that nobody's going to stop me now. It's like that song says, ain't nobody going to stop me now. It's uh, by Methan Whitehead. And you know what? Think about those songs back in the old days. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder, how do I keep from going under? Or, ain't no stopping me, ain't no stopping me right now. I will always love my mama. I will always love my mama. The biggest mistake that I made, in the name of Jesus, she goes to a grave not knowing. That's the sad part. But the good news is that the, be, the good news is that things are going to get better as long as you have the trust in your Lord and Savior. And ladies and gentlemen, pastors, ministers, ministers and evangelists, you got to hold on to what God has for you. You got to hold on what's in your given hand. He, he's given you something. And don't let it go. When I came into the studio tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and I was talking to the producer, I said, my brother, I'm not playing no more. I need this. I need this. I need something done. And I know how this gentleman it is. For, if it wasn't for him being the way he is, like one of those football coaches, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Wouldn't be standing here right now. Praise the Lord and glory be to God. It's got to be the glory that God gives us. It's the glory. That's why I feel good right now. Yes, I feel good. Yes, I am clean. Because there was times when I got on the bus, they wouldn't sit next to me. Now, it ain't about me, but it's about what God has done to for me. He took me from that point, from five, from five to seven years old to 15 years old from using this, using crack, shooting dope, talking smart to my wife when she was living. But the thing was is that it wasn't for her putting up with me, but now she's going to get the French benefits of eternal life, which she already has. And my kids... And my kids, they are going to be well taken care of. But God is number one. God is number one that he is the one that's going to get taken care of. I'm going to give him all the glory. I will give him all the honor. Whatever it takes in the name of Jesus, whatever it takes to give it to him, I will do it. I just want folks to know, even, even when... Your life don't seem like it's going anywhere. I'll have to set this down, ladies and gentlemen. Even when your life is not going to nothing, just when you just think everything is cut off, and it's like you you at your last rope, and you feel stuff coming down, and you don't know where in the world are you going to get your energy from, but you got to back up and reevaluate the situation it only takes you a minute because you ain't got a whole bunch of time when you're bringing this word. You got to look at it. You can't analyze it. You look at it and ask God for the word. What do I need to do right now? He'll tell you, just like he told me just now, put that pad down. I don't need the pad. I feel that spirit in me right now. So what's coming out of me right now? And if you ask me later on to repeat the same thing, I couldn't do it. I'm going to tell you that right now. I thank the Lord for the young lady that was singing because she inspired me with the word, the, the word, spiritual word, the song I didn't expect to see. You got to understand about a special treat. Now, they say you have a dog. A dog loves 
special treat. And when you give a dog a special treat, he starts to wag his tail and he's happy. But now, when you give a man of God a special treat, I had a special treat. Now I can stand up here like the Carolina Pampers when he scores a touchdown. He takes his hands and pull it open like Superman. I'm not saying I'm a Superman, but yeah, I'm a Superman for God. And whatever it takes for God, I'm going to do it. Whether you like me or not, I'm not here for you to like me. I'm here to bring the word of God. This is 2015. The doors are opening up. I went through several doors in my life. And every door that I touch, it don't seem like it was the right door. But as I came down here today, and when I spoke with the producer last week, I knew that door opened up. Because I called him, I said, brother, I feel it. Because this man of God, he's a man of God too. And the young lady that I just sang, she's a woman. She's a, a, a woman of God also. Uh, so we got to understand, when you have these talents, you got to display these talents. You cannot hold these talents inside you. You got to have... Uh, what they call this it's the call the exceeding greatness it's not that you're great but God gives you this exceeding power with inside your Holy Spirit that shows you that he makes you great he makes you great but how does he make you great because you get bold and when you become bold man what the world are you worried about I'm not worried about Jack no more no more for the people that told me no, I'm going to still love them. This tape, this broadcast that I'm doing tonight, this goes to somebody, don't matter who it is, they're going to get it. And i tell you what, I waited almost two and a half years to get this tape to this person. But I knew I was losing it. I was losing it. I was almost lost. But when God sent me into this man's direction, it was like I was almost re, uh, what's the word that I want to use? I reinvented all over again. My life came back to life. It's like when you get an apple and you got all this stuff in this apple, but you want to get to the bottom of the apple. In other words, the bottom of the apple is the core of the apple. So you got to get to the core of your life and start cleaning stuff out. Get the dirty stuff out and let the clean stuff and let the Holy Spirit abide in you. And when you abide in the Lord, and when you abide in the Lord, and when you abide in the Lord, then, then, then you know. That you were one bold soldier. Right now, I feel so, I'm not cocky, but ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this on YouTube, and if you get this on the link, and I, I know, and, and who I'm sending this to this evening, I'm not mad at nobody for holding me up, because God said, see, one thing about God, one thing about God, He is not going to give you something when you're not ready for it. He's not going to give it to you when you're not ready for it. Now, for me, I wasn't ready for it. I thought I was. When I first came out of here, man, I was just so cocky. I did, you know, with this and, and, and the, the Comcast broadcast. Boy, your, your boy right here, Old Red, was just one old cocky thing. And it had a little stint with a radio thing, but that wasn't no big deal. I'm not telling you to, uh, 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 for a resume. No, I'm telling you what I thought I was, and I wasn't nothing. See, and when you start to understand who you really are, and not what you think you are, Lord, Jesus got something for you. He got something for you. And I told you, and I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, for the people around the United States, when you pull this thing up, your boy right here that's talking to you, yeah, you're going to remember this face. Believe me, 
You are going to remember this faith because the same people that may be watching and are not watching it, those are the same ones that I want this message to go to, even though, because there's someone maybe watching this, knowing that they got something inside of them, and Lord Jesus, I'm feeling this. He got something inside of you, and you just, you got to get this talent out of you. It's just like Jamal Bryan says. It's just like, it's, when God gives you an opportunity, and we, with our crazy selves, we go take a bed, we go go and go try this. Don't know how we gonna deal with it, but we are so crazy that we were willing to try it, and that's where I'm at right now. I don't care if you tell me I can't do it. I'm gonna do it anyway. Let me tell you this here. Let me give you this here. Nothing's too hard for a God. When this producer told me. This is the crazy part. Yeah, I was salty. But he told me, he says, uh, yeah, people normally quit on themselves anyway. But I felt he was kind of, I took it kind of personally, to be honest with you. But I, that was okay. See, God got a way to, <laughs> to put a little fire under your behind. He got a way to do stuff to, do, to you to get you going. So, after the broadcast was over with, I said to this man, I said, brother, if you think I'm leaving, you are out your doggone mind. You are out your mind. And it's just like, I can tell you everything that I'm talking about from the beginning to the end to right now, from the testimony with Dooley Smith uh, to what I heard. Uh, and, and hold on now. I didn't even give you everything. I just gave you a piece of it. Now, if you want more, you're going to have to call me and bring me to your church. Because this comes with a price. I'm not giving you nothing for free. I'm not asking you for no money. But if you want me to come to your church, you, I'm going to give you the information. She will give you the information when she comes back on. And I'll have the closer say so. But whatever information you need, she'll give it to you. She'll give you my my uh, my website, my Facebook, my email, um, my phone number, to give you all of that. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not no T.D. Jakes. I don't want to be like nobody. All I want to do is be like Reverend Dennis Charles Miles. Do I want people to come and see me? Oh, of course I do. Do I want them to stand on the line? Of course I do. Is it ever going to happen? Of course it will happen. I wouldn't care. That's T.D. Jakes. They say you got to pay a whole bunch of money to go see him. But think about the times when the man came to Richmond, Virginia for free. This is what the thing about Americans. The man came here several times. Don't charge you no money. Go to St. Paul. You get free. You got Dooley Smith, Jamal Bryant, uh, uh, Fred, uh, Freddie Haynes, Dr. Freddie Haynes comes in and you see all these guys for free. So now Bishop comes along and, and, and this is, you know, that's part of the, the protocol. So now, this is how black people think. White people too. Why is this man asking for, why are they charging this kind of money? Think about this. If you were wearing his shoes, you would probably want the same thing. It's not wrong with it. It's just like asking God, can you step into God's shoes? And when you step into God's shoes, that comes with a price. When you want to walk in God's shoes, you better believe it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you some pain. It's going to cost you death. It's going to cost you uh, crying. You're going to cry. Lord, I, I, I mean, since I took on the word, it causes me. How do you think I feel? I, I walk down the street. I see people happy with their girlfriends. And when I preach, I tell them, man, you, been, you need to go. And when I preach, I tell them about learn how to treat your woman right. Because the biggest mistake that I made, as I'm getting, uh, I, got, I got a few more minutes, but as, as I uh, come to a close, but, you know, we have to learn how to respect one another. Respect your woman. You got to learn how to love her. She got to learn how to love you. You know, it ain't about all the time laying in the bed. It's not. Man, I told God, I asked God to send me a woman. 
And, and I think I'm moving a little too fast. I'm moving a little too fast. I got to slow my road because now things are going to come. Now. Now. Things are getting ready to happen. Now. Things are going to happen for my family. Now. For Reverend Miles. And for those that heard this broadcast or look at this on the YouTube, wow. I've got to say, this is my first sermon of the new year. And I have, God has blessed me with some other opportunities. Um, uh, I'm going to step away for a minute. And I want, um, uh, uh, Lord, I'll tell you one thing. See, one thing about the, one thing about broadcasting, if you forget something, you better keep rolling with it. <laughs> That's for sure. Come on back in here, honey. Come on back in here. But, but, but you got to help me. What, what's, your, what's your name again? Lord, what? Sister Sai Eva Johnson. All right. Then she got it from here. Then I'll come back and close it. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in to One Stop Ministries with the Reverend Dennis Miles. We hope that you have been blessed and encouraged today. And once again, this is Sister Sai Eva here to tell you to remember that, yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. For the Bible tells you so. Yes, Jesus loves you. Oh, yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you, for the Bible tells you so. Thank you. Thank you, As we come to a close, once again, I want to thank all the viewers. And Shaheen, and she's going to uh, finish this off. She's going to tell you about uh, the opportunities if you need to get in touch with me, if you don't mind, if you could tell them about the uh, my website, my Facebook, on, and that I'm doing live broadcasts um, uh, every Wednesday from 7 to uh, 7.30. And also, I'm going to get a bonus this year, folks. My time is going to be extended, but i got to wait for that. Okay? But she mm -hmm. got you from here. She'll be closing out. God bless you. Thank you. For live streaming, every Wednesday at 7 p.m., go to www.ustream.com slash VA Flavor TV. We are committed to God's word and to saving souls. Calls are also welcome during the broadcast at 804-347-2880. Again, that's 804-347-2880. And to learn more about Reverend Miles and One Stop Ministries, visit the website http colon slash slash min ministry dennis miles that's m i n dennis d e n n i s miles m i l e s dot wix w i x dot com slash one hyphen stop hyphen ministries his email is minister dennis miles that's M I N Dennis Miles at gmail.com and his Facebook is Dennis.miles.315. That's 315 at Facebook.com. Thank you.